Algebra 2, Lesson 7, Solving Radical Equations. Solving equations with radicals in them. Uh, we've solved equations that had radicals, uh, but we've left them with a radical in the question. We're going to look and we're going to solve questions where we can actually get rid of those radicals uh, altogether. A radical equation is an equation that contains at least one radical whose radicand contains a variable. So that means that there is a variable underneath that. Uh, it's not always a square root, but we look at it as a square root symbol. It's really called a radicand. This symbol here is referred to as a radicand. Okay, because it's, we often call it a square root, but it's only a square root when the number out front is a 2. Okay, that is a radicand. All right, so radical equations look like this, where we have the square root of x plus 3 plus 1, where the plus 1 is outside of it, equals 4, or the cube root of 2x plus 5 equals the cube root of x minus 1. These are radical equations. Non-radical equations are equations where the variable is not underneath the radicand. Okay? Jose, can we take out the headphones so I can guarantee you? I want to make sure I got your attention. Okay, you see the x outside there, you see the x outside over here. Those are non-radical equations, all right? I also could call them lame equations, I guess, if they're not radical. I don't know. Okay, probably. All right, but we're going to look at how to solve them. And to solve a radical equation, the first thing that we want to do is isolate the radical. So we want to move everything else over to the other side as much as possible. So in the, uh, in the event where we see some like this first one here, the square root of x plus 3 uh, plus 1 equals 4. The first thing that we would do with this is we would subtract 1, right? We'd get square root of x plus 3 equals 3, right? That's the first thing that we would do to solve that question is move everything else over to the other side, okay? All right, um, after that, then... Then what we want to do is we want to raise both sides of the equation to the power of the index of the radical. So uh, in the event where we see this first one, the index of this radical, when it's not listed, is 2. So what I would do to this is I would square both sides. So we'd end up writing x plus 3 equals 9. Right From here, I can solve that. I've done away with the square root. I can subtract 3 from both sides. x equals 6. And then I can go back and, and check that, right? Because 6 plus 3 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, right? I can check it. Okay, but the first thing we do is we isolate the radical. Then I take both sides to the power of the index of the radicand. All right, I know that sounds like a complicated sentence and a lot of words in there. But, uh, but what that will do is it will clear the radical. It's critical that the solutions of a radical equation be checked because some of the solutions obtained may be extraneous solutions, all right? Where whenever we plug them back into the original equation, they don't work. So sometimes we get extraneous solutions that, that won't work. It's like an absolute value that equals a negative number, right? You can try to solve it, but whenever you plug the number back in, it doesn't equal that negative number. In fact, it can never equal a negative. So we get that same type of situation uh, with extraneous solutions from solving radical equations. A solution of a derived equation that's not a solution of the original. Okay, from here, we can try to solve some questions. Let's see, hopefully I've got this up. All right, we have the square root of z minus 10 equals 16. What do I need to do first? Add 10, very good. So I'm going to get square root of z equals what? 26. Now, what's the second step? Square, because this is a square root, so we're going to square that to get rid of this. Okay, so I'm getting z equals what? What is 26 squared? 676. All right, and what we'll find is that if we did the square root of 676, we'd get 26 minus 10. Does 26 minus 10 equal 16? Sure does. Okay, so we want to make sure that we check our answer, right? All right, good. I feel like you could probably fly through several of these because it's a lot of the same type of thing. All right, look at number two. Again, I want to isolate the radical. So what am I going to do on this one? Divide by 8, all right? So I'm going to get square root of x. What is 72 divided by 8? 9. So I get 
square root of x equals 9. What do I need to do to get rid of the square root? Square both sides. Square both sides. All right, that's going to give me x equals what? 81. All right, we feeling pretty good about this? Yes, that's what I like to hear. Okay, does anybody need me to slow down? Take a breath. Okay. All right, they're going to get more complicated as we go. Number three. All right, again, isolate the radical. So what needs to move to the other side? Add six to both sides. Add six. So I have square root of x minus five equals what? Four. Now what do I do to both sides? Square them, okay? All right, so what happens to the square root? What, what do I write on the left-hand side now? x minus 5, very good. What does that equal on the right-hand side? 16. Okay, I still want to solve for x. What do I do with the negative 5? Add 5 to the other side. What does x equal? 21. Boom. All right, three questions in like three minutes. That's great. Okay. Corey, Christian, Jose, we're good back there. Miguel, how are you doing? Great. Okay. All right. Number four. Notice that up to this point, all these have been square roots. What do you notice different about number four? It's cube root. Okay. And we want to identify that. My index is three. But before I worry about that, <coughs> what do I need to do with this? Subtract two. Isolate the radicand. Okay. Subtract two. All right, so I've got the cube root of 4x minus 3 equals what? 7. Now what do I need to do to both sides? Cube, cube it. Okay, cube it. So take it to the third power. What, the, what is that going to reduce to on the left-hand side, Corey? What's that? 4x minus 3. So we got 4x minus 3 equals, what is 7 cubed? 343. Okay, now we're at something basic. We've solved things like before. What's the next step, Christian? Subtract 3 from both sides. Add 3 to both sides. Which one is it? You gave me two different things there. Add 3. Okay, add 3. All right, add 3. So we got 4x equals uh, 3. I've got to write and think at the same time. 46. What's the last thing I want to do here, Jose? Divide by 4. What is x equal? What's 346 divided by 4? Okay, it actually, as a fraction, uh, comes out to what? 173 over 2. Okay, I'm just going to divide both those terms by 2. Okay, does that make sense? Sometimes we do get a fraction or a decimal. Okay. Okay, now, oh, we've gotten into something tricky here, right? Five is totally different, right? I have two radicals on the same side of the equation. Okay, so this is what we do. This is a little different, but I'm going to move the second equation over to the other side, right? All right, so we're going to add the square root of z plus 6 to the other side. In fact, so what I'm going to write is I'm going to get square root of 2z plus 9, equals square root of z plus 6. Any ideas about how we could get rid of those radicals? Square both sides. Right? If I square both sides, I'm doing the same thing to both sides. So I'm getting equivalent. So what is this reducing to? 2z plus 9 equals z plus 6. All right. Uh, what do you want to do from there, Miguel? Subtract 9. Okay, we're subtracting 9 over here. Uh, then what else? Okay, that's giving me 2z equals z, what, minus 3? Okay, what's next? Not yet. Got to get all my z's together.
Okay, so you've got negative three over here, right? And this z is over here. That's great because I want stuff separated. Can I get this z over there? How do I do that? You don't know? It's one z. How do I get rid of one z? There you go. So we're going to subtract z. Subtract z. What is 2z minus 1z? 2z minus 1z. What's 2 minus 1? 1z. So I'm left with just z equals negative 3. z equals negative 3. Don't be afraid to subtract z. Okay? Good now? Okay. All right. Ooh, word problem. Six. Ah. The area of a rectangle is 112. The length is 7, and the width is radical x. What is the value of x? What is the width of the rectangle? Okay. So we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, correct? So what I'm writing here is that 7, my length, times my width, radical x, equals what? equals 112. All right, Jewel, help me out here. How am I going to solve for x? Y. Okay, on both sides. Okay, so we've got radical x equals 112 divided by 7. I don't know. Does it go into it evenly? 16 times? Is that it? Somebody said? All right, so I get square root of x equals 16. What do I want to do now to get just x and not square root of x? Square, not square root, but square them, okay? Square them. So the square root of x squared is going to eliminate the x, but we need to find out what 16 squared is. 256, okay? So we're saying the value of x is 256, and that's one of the things that they ask for, but the width itself, right, the width is the square root, so we need the square root of 256, which so we know that the width, we already know that the square root of 256 is 16. So we have those two parts of the answer right there. So we're actually getting A. Does that make sense? Because the width is the square root of whatever X is. Okay, good job. All right. Plugging along, seven... Let's come up to Geneva. What do you think? Not yet. I need to get that 2 away from this square root. Divide by 2. Okay, divide by 2. All right, so what I'm writing on here is square root of 4 over 2 equals square root of 3x minus 5. Okay? Um, what can I do to both sides now? Same step that you were wanting to do earlier. Oh, hold on. I got an x there. That's fine. Square them. Square them. Okay? So what I'm going to get is I'm the square root of 4x squared is 4x, but what is 2 squared? 4. Okay? And this equals 3x minus 5. All right, now, and it's not to say that I couldn't have done that at the beginning, that I would have just squared this side. I think I probably would have gotten the same thing. But I'm going to multiply by 4 and multiply by 4. Okay? So I'm getting 4x, and now I have to distribute. And a lot of people will distribute here, but they won't distribute here. I have to distribute to both, right? So what am I getting out of that? Okay, perfect. 12x minus 20. Okay, we need to get things uh, situated. So what do I want to move next? Subtract 12x. Okay, subtract 12x. What is 4x minus 12x? 
negative 8x. Negative 8x equals negative 20. What are you going to do now? Divide by negative 8. All right. Negative 20 divided by negative 8. What's that? 2.5. Or we could say 5 halves, right? Either one of those answers right there will work. Okay. All right. Number eight. Sit lolly. Okay. I need to isolate my radical. What are you going to move? The what? The 32? No, the 32 is already over there. The 4. How am I going to get rid of the 4? Nope. Because this is 4 times the cube root of x plus 7. How do I undo multiplication? Divide by 4 on both sides. Is that what you said? Okay. Divide by 4 on both sides. All right. So that's giving me square root of x plus 7. What is 32 divided by 4? 8. 8. All right. Now what do you want to do? Square both sides. All right, so what do I get on the left-hand side? Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, I cube them. Okay, all right. What do I get on the left-hand side? X plus 7, good. What do I get on the right-hand side? 5, 12. All right, what am I doing from here? If I, okay, subtract 7. Okay, X equals what? 505. We all feel pretty good about this so far. A pretty good understanding of it. All right, we've got two questions left. All right, I'm going to come across the aisle here to Diana. Okay, what do we want to do? Not yet. We have to isolate the radical. What's that? Uh, we have no multiplication in here, so we're not going to do any division. Subtract. What am I subtracting? 9. All right, so we've got radical x equals, what's 4 minus 9? Negative 5. All right, what do we want to do now to solve for x? Square both sides. All right, so x equals what? x equals, uh, you said 25. All right, this is where we check our answer, okay? What is the square root of 25? 5, what's 5 plus 9? 14. So this is where we say no solution. Do we understand why? Okay, because it, it forces us. When we got to square root of x equals negative 5, that's when we got to something that we should recognize is not going to work. Okay? Okay, but you did everything right. You did all the math perfectly, but this is why we have to go back and actually input our answer and see, does this work? So this is what is called an extraneous, uh, an extraneous solution. Okay? All right. Oh, let's see. Maddie, have I ca I've called on you, haven't I? No, I haven't. Okay. Can you help me out with this one? Add 3, good. Add 3. All right, so we've got square root of negative 2x plus 4 equals what? What's negative 1 plus 3? 2. Okay, what do you want to do now? Square both sides, right? All right, so what am I writing on the left-hand side now? All right, equals what? Four, okay? okay? So I'm getting negative 2x equals what? Zero. What's next? Yep, because I'm multiplying. Divide by negative 2. All right, 
What's zero divided by negative two? Zero. All right. You're, you're good. And so let's test our answer. What's negative two times zero? Zero. So this is just the square root of four then, right? What's the square root of four? Anyway, two. What's two minus three? Negative one. So it works, right? All right, so x equals zero. We're all good. If we're done, you guys have the next uh, six or seven minutes to just work on your homework. Okay, so go ahead and get started.